Okay, now the last video that I just got them making, it was an excellent video, but it shut itself off because the batteries ran out. So, my name is Leslie Williams, and I'm in San Diego, California. I just got done making an extremely great video. I hope and pray that you watch it. Its YouTube title will be put in the description of this YouTube video so you can review it in order to be able to see in your face evidence. And the evidence that I enclosed in it is not, is the evidence that I'm going to enclose in this one will cooperate and, uh, how can I say it, um, uh, enhance the evidence that you're going to see in this video. But since for the last hour or so, I have been, well, the last video was almost an hour long. I got poison ivy, so bear with me. Um, so what I'm going to do is the last video that I just got done making is over is almost an hour long. And so what I'm going to do while I'm making this one is I'm going to take a sip of my Mountain Dewski. And I'm going to light up a cigarette. And if you're a child, do not smoke. It's not good for you. Teenager too. Anyways. I'm in San Diego, California, and my name is Leslie Williams. I decided to make this video, uh, to, to make a second video, because I don't like having videos uh, stop. In, uh, in other words, when I make a video, towards the end of it, when I go to conclude it, I'll say, thank you for listening, have a nice day, but since the battery ran out, I wasn't able to say that. And plus also, since some information, uh, since the battery ran out, I was not able to end the video in the way I wanted to end it with some um, additional cooperating uh, evidence that I was going to include in it. So this is an extension of the first video. Uh, the, in fact, though, you know, i tell you what I'm going to do. The first video that this one is stemming from will have the same exact title, except at the end of this video title, it will have a number two. That one will have a number one. The same exact title, just two different numbers. Uh, okay, so let me just uh, open up my tent here. The, the evidence that's in that video is astronomical. I am a target victim and activist concerned on the criminal expeditions of what is known as gang stalking. And uh, this is the kind of crime that's kind of hard to prove because of the type of methodologies that are used against organized stalking, gang stalking, targeted individuals. Because the perpetrators, the filthy sewer rats that are in the system that are connected to these criminalities, they're not only using the system to perpetrate the crimes, but they're also using the system to protect them. Which makes it almost very, uh, it, at times it can literally make this crime impossible to prove. Because the crimes are hard to prove in themselves because of the lies, the secrecy, and the uh, cooperation. The whole entire thing is, is, is protected by lies and secrecy and cooperation. All of it, all, most of it, I would say uh, at least a good 99% of it is perpetrated by individuals within the system. And we're talking about, well, I'm not going to be direct about it because they can say I'm implying they're involved in it. Let me just put it to you this way. I'll make my statements in a question format. Is the San Diego District Attorney's Office involved in gang stalking? That's a question. Anybody can ask a question. How about the prosecutor's office? Do you think they might be? That's a question, too. <laughs> Are specific San Diego police officers involved in gang stalking? <laughs> yes. Go to YouTube and type in 2 forward slash 20 forward slash uh, 13 learning disabled woman catches another gang stalker admitting sense of harass. Read comments. That's me catching an individual on a corner within an hour after I left the San Diego District Attorney's office. This guy said, <laughs> this guy said, admitting that a San Diego police officer by the name of Steve put him on a corner to engage in gang stalking of me. And you gotta listen to that video all the way up into the library last second. Uh, that's got to do with uh, an individual being put on a corner to engage in specific physical gestures for me to see. They're called sensitization methods. Now, in order for you to see that this is a factual crime, go to YouTube and Google and type in sensitization methods and gang stalking, and then go to YouTube and type in learning disabled woman catches gang stalker admitting sent to harass. Read comments, which means look at everything in the about feature of that YouTube video. Cross reference all, write this down, cross reference all published dates to statements to evidence. Look at what comes first, look, look at what I was exposing before the evidence was obtained, and you can do that by looking at the published dates. 
Then you'll be able to understand the 2 forward slash 20 forward slash 13 learning disabled woman catches another gang stalker admitting sense of rest. And you gotta listen to that YouTube video all the way to the last second because that towards the very last seconds of it, I say to this guy, don't put your hands to your face no more. And when I first approached him, I, I, I say, you guys are all the same. Because they're putting individuals along all my routes to repeat the words gang stalk, gang stalker, gang stalking, gang stalk, gang stalker, gang stalking, gang stalk, gang stalk, gang stalk, gang stalk, gang stalker, oh my god, gang stalker, gang stalker, oh my god, we're crazy gang stalk in that way everywhere I go. And I have 800 audio files to prove it. Now, when they're not doing that, they're engaging in specific physical gestures for me to see everywhere I go every single day. That's designed to intentionally let you overtly know you're being stalked. They're called sensitization methods. Now, the learning disabled woman catches a gang stalker admitting sent to rest read comments is me literally catching three teenagers admitting they were put on a bus route. I'm watching two squirrels right now. That's me catching three teenagers admitting they were put on a bus route to engage in these physical gestures intentionally, a bus route I was already on, bus route 928, which was the bus route I was assaulted on. And then MTS sent me an altered video of me being assaulted. <laughs> I mean, how stupid can you friggin' be to leave, to literally leave that kind of a breadcrumb? I don't know how stupider you can be. Go to YouTube and type in learning disabled woman brutally assaulted on an MTS bus. And then go to Google and YouTube and type in learning disabled woman exposes how MTS assault video is altered. I'm in San Diego, California, and my name is Leslie Williams. So... Uh, I'm really mad at my squirrels right now because they've been eating my bread, uh, my bird's bread all morning. What are you about to listen to right now? Well, you're about ready to listen to what I'm about ready to play you. Hey, right here. Oh, wrong audio file. Sorry. Williams and I'm in San Diego, California. Now, you heard in this YouTube video, this news broadcaster say that the victim of this crime could be driving their car, talking on their cell phone, or walking down the street when a group of people try to systematically terrorize them. Well, do you hear these two guys say gang stalk together? <coughs> Excuse me. Gang stalking and gang of stalking, I'm gonna F you up. You be the judge. Get the fuck out! Get the fuck out! 
Okay, now, what I'm about ready to show you right now, that event occurred that you just heard on Thanksgiving Day 2013. This email right here was written by me from UCSD on November 1st, 2012, one year and 27 days before. Do you notice in this email, let me zoom in really fast. Okay, do you notice in this email, okay? Uh, the method is utilized <clears throat> around me using different or same comments and or words and or phrases okay have caught gang stalker being mentioned ar around me at 15 locations on over 200 occasions it's been caught on 800 occasions <clears throat> on audio file november 1st 2012 and the event that just occurred that you just heard happened right up the street from ucsd on thanksgiving day 2013 this shows that what I was exposing back in November 2012 was already happening. Because I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen, but do you think I'm a psychic? Do you think I'm a psychic? This email brings it all live right here. It flat out states that individuals are getting around me and constantly repeating gang stalk and gang stalker everywhere I go. Everywhere I go. And I can prove that this event occurred on Thanksgiving Day. Plus, I got 800 audio files of it happening every day before and in between and since. Now, this right here is a is a video of an email that was made on November 22nd, 2013. It was a prediction stating that I would be banned from UCSD. Okay, that's right. Because of me exposing being gang stalked on their campus. That's right. Now, I just recently got an email and a letter from them stating that I'm that if one more complaint happens to, uh, concerning me, that I'm going to be banned from the CSD libraries for a year. Now, you got to look at the first video that this one is stemming from. Now, I got a long day ahead of me today. Uh, well, let me just show it to you right here. Uh, I got the. This is a. Uh, this is the the individual. She's the head of the library safety and security. Her name is Nancy. Okay. And uh, basically it says, I received a letter from library security officer today by the name of Arthur, January 27th, 2014. And it's basically, the letter that she sent me is basically, I got the letter, I don't know where it's at right now, I don't know if it's in this particular file or if I got it hidden away. Uh, but the letter's already been scanned and put into a PDF link, and so that'll be put in this blog that this video is in. And it basically tries to say that the letter that they gave me on January 27, 2014 was stating that I was harassing a biomedical library staff personnel. It was nothing but a total, complete, literal, total, complete, bold-faced lie. Okay? Basically what they're doing is that they know I got evidence of being gang-stalked at the North University San Diego Public Library, the Sarah Mesa Library, California State San Marcos University, USD, SDSU, and UCSD. And they know I got undisputable evidence concerning it. So what they're doing is staging events and complaints to make it appear that they got a normal appearing reason to ban me and to accumulate falsified documentation at each place in case I sue them. That way they can present this evidence in court and try to make it appear that there's a pattern of behavior about me at the places I'm going to. Now, all these universities that I've already forementioned in this video and in the previous video, there's a ruler I got right now in my possession. Uh, it's not in this, it's not right now in this particular stuff because I'm going through it today to categorize it to take it to a lawyer. But it's a ruler, it's a white ruler with blue lettering on it. And you can probably find it at either USD, SDSU, US, UCSD, or any, uh, any library in San Diego unless they took them off their counters. It's a white ruler, it's a plastic floppy uh, ruler that you can flop back and forth. And it shows that all of the aforementioned, all of the San Diego public libraries, USD, SDSU, UCSD, CSD are on one centralized computer system and basically what they're doing is through the tracking surveillance and observation of the targeted individual of gang stalking they're communicating with each other 
and they're telling each other through the surveillance of the target they know where the target's at at all times in real time if they see a target individual approaching their environment they are then told to engage in specific behaviors towards the target when the target reaches their place like the library or whether it be a university or a public library and i've already proven that in the first video that's right and it's their way to intentionally let the target overtly know that they are gang stalking them while they deny it and then stage complaints to make it appear that the target is a problem and this is all done to protect them from criminal prosecution and premise liability so they can what they're trying to do is is create create on paper a pattern of behavior about me at these places that are that is derogatory even though it's bold-faced lies but they, they believe that all they got to do is create these letters and write bullshit in them and then use the letters and the staged complaints to ban me. And if you don't believe me, I caught on a digital audio file on November 20th, 2013, a UCSD library security officer flat out stating to me and a hidden running tape recorder that a staged complaint can cause me to be banned. And that YouTube video is already online and it will be put in this blog. In reference to how the audio file of, the, of him stating that was caught on a tape recorder, published to YouTube, and, and it's now on YouTube. I just forgot the name of the title of it. Just trust me. I'm going to put this in a blog, and then I'm going to put all the cooperating material in it. The PDF links that shows you all this paperwork pertaining to predictions and the events happened after the predictions. So you can see the pattern of behavior that they're engaging in towards me and why. I'm in San Diego, California, and my name is Leslie Williams. I made this video to inform to expose the truth. So the truth can be known for what it is, not the lies and the bullshit. It doesn't matter if a skank, oh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to say that. It doesn't matter if a person who has an employment description attached to a building that gang stalking is factually happening in uses a letterhead from that building, a very building that property taxes are paying for. And this, this, this person sits down in front of her computer and says, well, how am I going to write this out? What, what am I supposed to say? And she writes it out. And then just because it's on UCSD letterhead, looking all official, she believes that that'll pass for the truth. I think not. Because I already got on hundreds of audio files of me being gang stalked on USD campus, US, UCSD campus, and SDSU in the same exact identical verbal way every place I went on their campuses and in businesses, transportation services, everywhere. So I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen, but do you really honestly think that you can call a tape recorder delusional? Do you think that my phone has the ability to have a psychiatric diagnosis? If that November 1st, 2012 email that I just showed you that stated that individuals are getting around me and seeing gang stalk around me everywhere I go, and then this is caught one year and 27 days later on a sidewalk right up the street from UCSD, then, then my phone's delusional too. Gang is stalking on F you up. They both said gang stalk together, then one said gang stalking, and then they then and then that same one said gang is stalking on F you up. So all you gotta do again is look at this November 1st, 2012 email sent from UCSD. This email was sent from UCSD. It flat out says it. Gang stalker being mentioned around me at over 15 locations on over 200 occasions. It's been caught on over 800 occasions. So good luck. Good luck. Good luck in trying to imply. Let me just unzoom this really fast. Good luck in trying to imply that I'm mentally ill, delusional, crazy, schizophrenic, bipolar, a threat to myself or others. You would not believe the lies that was told in the letter that UCSD gave me on January 27, 2014. I'm talking about in your face, bold face lies. Okay, and I'm going to prove it. I'm in San Diego, California, and in closing, I want to state to you something which you can do right now. Go to Google and type in the following in the following way that I describe it. Gang stalking, space, human trafficking. Look at what comes up. Especially pay close attention to the YouTube channel, Protect Your Life Now. 
do you really honestly think these universities or public libraries want it to be known that the gang stalking they're engaging in towards me has to do with human trafficking? Of course not. So they believe all they got to do is lie on paper, say that it's not happening or that they were never involved in it, and then, then, and then their hands are washed. Hang on. See, if a woman who's on the phone saying, help, help, I need, I need help, I'm being raped, if somebody comes and takes that phone out of their hand, then the rape can happen in private. Well, if I get banned from library, libraries and university libraries, I can't get on the internet to expose what's happening to me. Therefore, the crime can continue without nobody noti noticing it. Do you see what I'm saying? Is this why I'm being banned from libraries and university libraries? The evidence I have is undisputable. So, UCSD, SCSU, and UCSD, okay, and the California State San Marcos University, they don't mind involving themselves in the gang stalking. They just don't want you to know about it because they are aware of the crimes that are attached to it. The only thing they care about is making sure their image is not tarnished, so intuition is not affected because enrollment would be. Look at what happened with the Penn State fiasco. They covered that up for 10 full years. Little boys being raped on campus because the only thing they cared about was their enrollment. They lost hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars because of it. I'm in San Diego, California. My name is Hussie Williams. I'm a good woman. I'm not involved in any illegal or criminal activity whatsoever. Whatsoever. This crime is happening to me in the places that are banning me from their university campuses and their libraries and staging events along my routes, which include brutal assaults. They're doing it in order to protect themselves because they know I got the evidence. I'm in San Diego, California. My name is Elsie Williams. I do what I do because the truth needs to be known for what it is. I do appreciate you listening and have a nice day.